Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are doing trigonometric identities. So when this day ends, there are objectives that we must have reached in this topic. And then the first objective is we should know what are trigonometric identities. What are trigonometric identities? That is number one. Number two, we need to know those trigonometric identities, the basic ones, so that we can actually start from there, laying a foundation for a more challenging kind of trigonometric identities. Number three, how do we prove those trig identities? You know you will be requested to prove those trig identities, so you must know how to do that. And then lastly, you must know that, okay, now that I know these trig identities, how do I use them? So at the end of this video, you must be able to know these one, two, three, four things. Now, ladies and gentlemen, personalities, there are many trigonometric identities. There, there are thousands of them. And all of those thousands, they are taken from very basic trigonometric identities that we know. And then we're going to look at them and look at how to work with them and then take things from there. Now, the first trigonometric identity that we're going to talk about is is sin theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. This is the first one. And then the second one that we're going to talk to or talk about is the one that says sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. Right. So, let us go ahead and discuss and enjoy. Right. So, you guys remember that we defined the trigonometric, trigonometric functions because this is where everything starts. And then what we got is that if you have sine theta, sine theta is equal to opposite over, over hypotenuse. And then we had something that we refer to, right? I'm going to come just now. We have something that we said we're going to use. We say it's so to ha do you guys remember this it's so ka toy that means sine theta is equal to what is equal to opposite over hypotenuse and then cos theta is equal to what is equal to a which is adjacent h is hypotenuse so adjacent over over hypotenuse and then we had what we had tan theta which is none other than what or which is opposite over what over adjacent okay so that is how we defined trigonometric identities in terms of sides relative to to the angle at place and then now after that we said okay let us define trigonometric functions in terms of x y n and r and then what we did is <clears throat> we threw a right angle triangle it is 90 degrees and then we have theta here aha uh -huh. and then we know that if you put the what do they call this thing the cartesian plane this is going to be the y axis so you're going to have y here and then this is going to be the x axis so you're going to have x axis and then you've got what you've got r here and then now from there we then got something that if we are talking about sine Theta. So now we were able to define these trigonometric functions, but in terms of a right angle triangle, in terms of x, y, n, and r. And then we ended up with sine theta, which is over opposite, opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is y, 
and then hypotenuse is 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 r and then you end up with cos theta which is equal to what which is equal to cos is adjacent adjacent is x and then over hypotenuse hypotenuse is what here is r and then lastly tan theta is opposite uh -huh. what is opposite to this angle opposite is y so it's y and then over over what opposite over adjacent adjacent is is x so we end up with with something like this so we were able to define trigonometric functions in terms of x y n and r so these trigonometric functions in terms of x y and r are exactly what we're going to use when we solve the problem that we're coming to solve okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to erase this okay I, I hope you've written this and then you can actually put it somewhere i'm going to put it on top here so this i will always refer to it if i need to refer to it okay so we have sine theta which is equal to y over r and then cos theta which is equal to x over r x over r and then lastly tan theta which is equal to y over over x right there we go all right now let's go back to the crux of today so question number one was what are trigonometric identities okay basically when you are talking about trigonometric identities if you say a is equal to b this is an identity you are taking something you are equating it to to something okay so it's something equal to something and then something now that now this is called a statement now this statement must be proved if you say something is equal to something it must be proved so identities means they are exactly the same if i say this is equal to this it means this if i can do something to it it can end up being like this or this if i can do something to it it can end up being like this identities it means it's not the idea that you know in english in maths it means they are the same if you say as if i say something are identities i simply mean they are exactly they are exactly the same so the first identity is what we are saying we are making a claim here we are saying tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta all right now we are dealing with the third part how to prove them we know what trick identities are trick identities are things that are declared to be the same of which we can prove that they are the same what are people a basic trigonometric identities that we're going to deal with today we're going to deal with tan theta is equal to sine theta over, over cos theta and then secondly sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one now let's look at number three how do you prove them because we say we can prove them so now how do you do that okay now here's a proof proof okay now okay so what we are going to do so when you are proving now this is one way of proving when you are proving you must take either the left hand side and you must show it to be the same as as the as the right hand side or you must take the right hand side and make it to be the same as the as the left hand side sometimes in exceptional circumstances you manipulate both the left hand side and the right hand side and you must end up with the same thing both sides so but in this case we will take the left hand side now how do you know which side you must take you must take the side that looks complicated and then try and make it look like a side that does not look complicated now let's take the the left hand side so the the left hand side is equal to sine theta over cos 
fit. I want to show that this left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Now, what is sine theta? Sine theta is y over r. So it's going to be y over r divided by what about cos theta? Cos theta is equal to x over r x over over r. Okay? Do we agree? Yes, we agree. So you know uh, from the rules of dividing a fraction by a fraction that if you've got something like this that means you're going to take the numerator the fraction and then you're going to say y over over what over r is equal to and then you take the fraction that is in the denominator and then put it here but you must flip it over so it's going with times instead of x over r is going to be now what r over x so can you see? So now this will cancel this and then you end up with y over x. And what is y over x? Aha, there is y over x. What is y over x? y over x is equal to is equal to tan theta, which is equal to the right hand side. And then now, because of that, left hand side is equal to right hand side. And then this is what you were supposed to, to prove. Right. Okay. So, you took the left hand side and then you show that it is equal to the right hand side. Okay. So, that's basically what happens when you prove the identity you must just do exactly that. Take the left-hand side, show it to be equal to the right-hand side, or take the right-hand side and show it to be equal to what? To the left-hand side. And then close thing there. Right. So now we can say with pride that indeed tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. Now what does this mean? It means that in if you see tan theta, in future, you can actually remove the tan theta and replace it with sine theta over cos theta. Or if you see sine theta over cos theta, you can remove it and replace it with what? With tan theta. So we have proved this identity. Right, now let's go to the next identity and then try to, to prove it and then see how things go from there. Right, I think we are still coming up well. Are we, are we coming up well? think so okay now let's take the second one the second one is sine it's sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one let's prove this one okay guys remember you may be asked especially in the grade 11 or grade 12 for example you may be asked to prove this thing but mostly in grade 11 grade 12 you mostly apply this formula but in grade 11 you can be asked to prove them directly and you can get back so you must know these proofs and beside no uh, beside uh, having to have to know these proofs also it is important to practice the proof because it's actually strengthen your your mathematical muscles so Remember what I said earlier? We want to prove that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. We said we can take the left-hand side and show it to be equal to the right-hand side. But we, in terms of how you choose, we said we must, talk, we must take the most or the side that looks complicated the most. So in this side, the side that looks complicated the most is the left-hand side. So we say, we'll just say left. And side is equal to? Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. Mm -hmm. And then this is same as you know what sine is. Sine is y over. Okay, this thing must move. There we go. Sine is y over y over r. You remember that. So we say y over 
R. Remember, sine squared theta is simply means sine theta squared. It's just that this is how we write it. This is the acceptable notation. So we're going to put squared here. And then we're going to do the same thing here. Plus. Pause. I want you to pause this video and then to write this on your own. And then unpause it again and then you'll see what you're writing. But at the end of the day, you will end up with something like this. You will end up with x over over r cos x over r is cos and then squared. Okay. Now what happens? This will give you what y squared. Remember, if you've got some something squared, then if that thing is a fraction, therefore. You square the numerator and then you square the denominator. So you're gonna get y squared over over r squared and then plus x squared over over r squared. Mm -hmm. And then this is going to be nothing other than you can see there's a denominator here which is the same. So you can actually keep it and then you, you will end up with what? You will end up with, okay, let's put it here. You will end up with x squared, not x squared. You will end up with y squared plus x squared is equal to over r squared. Okay. But guys, I want you to look at this one. This is y squared plus x squared y squared plus x squared this is same as x squared plus y squared do we remember this from somewhere yes we do where do we remember this from from pi the co plus that x squared plus y squared we said this is equal to what we said it is equal to r squared aha in pythagoras so because of that so what are we going to do you're going to end up saying r squared over oh let's just write here this is going to be r squared over r squared which is equal to r squared over r squared this will cancel each other and then we end up with one which is what which is the which is the the right hand side all right and then when you are writing this, please do indicate on the side. Okay, I can't indicate on the side because I left, I left the space. But please do indicate that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared from Pythagoras. So that you show how did you get this to be r squared. Because you can't just introduce things in math and not tell us where do you take them from. Okay, you must indicate this. Okay, so because of that, left hand side is equal to right hand side. And then this is what was supposed to be to be proved. So here is your is your proof. Right. Wonderful. Wonderful. So now we have proved both our identities. Now, guys, these two identities that you spoke about. They are very important and they are very useful up until grade 12 or even beyond that they are very useful so please remember them write them down somewhere so that you can be able to look at them every time use them so that you can know them because you will need them right so this is a proof an official proof that you can get marked for but another thing that is important that i would like to raise to you which is very important guys is the following is that from this identity you can actually get other two identities okay you can get other two identities now what are these two identities you can take this sign and put it on the other side and you end up getting another identity which is cos squared theta is equal to one minus sine squared Theta. The sine squared theta is the one that you took from the side to the side, and the sine changed from plus two to minus 
and you can also get another one from this one you can then take course to this side when you take course to this side then you will remain with sine squared theta this side and then one will always be here and then minus cos squared theta so these are either two identities that come from this identity that can be very useful in some of the problems that you can deal with now guys we are going to go to number four now and we are going to look at how are we going to use these identities when we are solving problems okay how are we going to use these identities when we are solving problems because we said we do identities so that we can be able to use them to solve problems so now how do we do that okay now let me quickly write these identities here the one that comes from me okay i'm gonna write their mother and them their mother is sine squared theta uh -huh. plus cos squared theta which is equal to one and then they are cos squared theta is equal to one minus sine squared theta and then the last one is sine squared theta is equal to one minus cos squared theta right right okay now guys this is already now ahead okay so we are now going to try and solve problems to see the usefulness of this theorem okay guys when you are supposed to prove or simplify so we're gonna use this theorem using trick identities identities we're gonna use them in two ways number one when they say simplify and then they show trigonometric function when they say simplify then we know we are going to use trigonometric identities eh? and we'll see if they say proof proof and then they give us two things that are equal to each other or that are being claimed to be equal then we can use trick identities and so so that we can be able to show if those things are really equal or or not right so how do we go about let's get this part going and then let's prove we've done the theoretical part now let's see if these things work for us okay now we're going to take the first one let's say simplify they say simply simplify right and then ah, okay did not use this one let me use another one nice one so let's say we've got number one we've got sine x uh -huh, divided by cos x multiplied by tan x we are supposed to simplify this the question is how are we going to simplify all right let us try and see and then just one thing that i want to at one point that i want to make when it comes to simplifying guys when it comes to simplifying when it comes to simplifying um one in one problem you can simplify in many different ways okay so if you see somebody not simplifying the way you simplified it does not mean they are wrong and you are right or you are right and they are wrong it means that you just use different ways the most important thing when you simplify is that you must use valid trigonometric identity since the one that has been proved or the one that you can be able to prove all right so it doesn't really matter which one do you use okay so we are supposed to simplify here okay now let's quickly do that aha so now guys when you're simplifying what is to simplify simplifying is to make things simple okay so this is mixed masala like this we just want to make it simple okay we just want to make it simple so you simplify it as much as as possible okay now sine x 
over cos x and then times tan x. So, okay, we can already see tan x. Aha. So, let us change tan x to an identity that we know. So, we'll have sin x uh -huh, divided by cos x. Okay? And then, let's change tan x into this because we said that it's equal. Okay, so instead of tan x, we put sin x over cos x. All right. Now, because of this, you can see this cancels this one. And then what happens? You remain with sin x over sin x. And that is equal to what? 1, which is very simple. Your answer is it's done because this will actually cancel this one. That's it. You are done. You were able to use this identity to do what? To solve problems. Let's take a second problem that you are supposed to simplify number 2. <coughs> 2. Let's take 8 sine squared theta plus 8 cos squared theta. We are supposed to simplify this one. Alright, now when we look at this thing, now this guys brings us to a most, one of the most important, one of the most important mathematical facts. When, what is that? Is that when you are doing, math is, okay, let's, let me start here. Math is self-sufficient. It means that math laws are always valid every time. They are always valid every time. And they don't get suspended. So, for example, now we are busy doing trigonometric identities. Now, that does not mean that other laws of math that you've learned in the past, from grade R up to now, they have been suspended. They are still at use. Okay, so we can still use them. So, when you look at this thing, you are busy doing trigonometric, but uh -uh, you notice that uh -uh, here there is a there is a, a common factor. Okay, so there is a common factor, which is what, which is which is eight. And the rules of x of 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 of, of and then the, the when when you are simplifying in algebra, you know that when you have a common factor, you must take it out. Even in trigonometry, it still applies. So here we are going to apply that law, and then we're going to say this is equal to eight. Uh huh. This is equal to eight, and then we open the bracket, and then you end up with sine squared theta plus cos squared theta right sine squared theta minus cos squared theta aha have you seen this somewhere yes you've seen it somewhere you've seen it where yeah this is exactly what one so instead of this thing you will then have eight multiplied by one aha eight times one is equal to 8. You are done. You've simplified it beautifully. You have simplified it beautifully. Isn't it wonderful? Why do we have identities? We have identities because we use identities if we want to do what? If we want to, if we want to solve problems. Okay? Right. Now, Let's put another problem. We're still simplifying now. This is the third one. We're still simplifying. We haven't proved, okay? You will still, will still, will still look at one where we need to prove and take things from there, okay? Right now, let's take another one. We've got one minus cos squared x and then divided by what sign x okay now what do we do here we are supposed to simplify guys we know that from our identity 
we end up with two other identities. And then, aha, one minus cos, aha, this is equal to sine squared theta. So, in this case, this is same as one minus cos squared theta is same as sine squared theta. So, in this case, it's going to be sine squared Use a different color, we're using different colors for a solution. It's going to be sine squared x over sine x. And then, guys, we did speak, and when we said that sine squared x means sine x over sine x, so one of the so we're going to have here, we're going to have sine x times sine x over over sine x and then this sine x will cancel the sine x and then you remain with what with sine x and then there's nothing further that you can do so you have simply right right you have simply right now let's do the last problem now let's say they don't say you must simplify now they say you must prove question is how we go about doing that so prove that sine to the power 4 x minus cos to the power 4 x is equal to what is equal to 1 minus 2 cos squared x. Okay, let us prove that. Alright, so how do we prove that? Okay, this time around, I'm going to use black for solutions. Proof. Alright. Remember what I said to you. We said we're going to take the the side that looks complicated and then we're going to start with it. So, what is that side? Okay, it's still the left hand side. Left hand side is equal to is equal to sine four x minus cos four x. All right. So how do we then deal with this thing? okay guys this opens another cane of worms look in maths you must always use things that you know in order to show things that you currently do not know so in this case we're going to do exactly that okay so what we are going to do is we are going to say okay let's start with the first the, the, let's start i think let, let's, let's let's do it like this let's say okay let's do it the, 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 the in the in the, in a, a little bit um abstract way and then let's then try to later do it in a more simplistic way okay so you know that when you've got sine squared x this is the same as so so the sine to the power four x this is the same as sine squared x plus multiplied by sine squared x so this is a square this is sine squared x square okay so this is going to be this is going to be sine squared x and then squared minus cos squared x and then squared all right this is basically what this means all right so if this is things like this then 
it will then be ah, actually it seems as if we can wanna be able to come to, to to connect these things. So this is the same as a squared minus b squared. Guys, you remember this from grade 10. I'm not sure. Grade 9 is well. Some schools do it in grade 9. This is what? This is a difference of, of two squares. So this is the same as you just open two brackets like this. And then first term, a and a, this give you this one. And then second term, b and, and b. And then you add plus n and minus or minus or plus. Doesn't matter. Okay, this is a difference of two squares. But in this particular case, your a is what? Is sine squared x. So you are also going to do this. I'm going to open a bracket. Okay. And then, okay, let's make, a, let's make them a little bit bigger. I'm going to open a bracket. And then I'm going to open another bracket. So, facts out of first term, we just take a and a so here it's going to be sine x and and sine x but hey, no 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 it's not sine x it's sine squared x so it's sine squared x and then sine squared x okay and then you need to take the factors of the last term b squared and then it's b and b in this in, in the side is cos squared x all squared so it's cos squared x and cos squared x so you put cos squared x here and then cos squared x here and then you add plus here and then minus here difference of difference of of two of two squares right okay now equal to right now you are here do this thing look familiar somewhere? Let's look at our identities. Aha, yes, 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 yes. They do look familiar. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one. So we remove all of this thing and what do we put instead in, in the place of it? We put one. Aha, wonderful. So we get one times times sine squared x minus cos squared x aha so one multiplied by this thing you all know that anything multiplied by one is itself so you end up with sine squared x minus cos squared x right okay so this is where you are now when you are proving guys there's always a multi million dollar question and that question is whether you are done or you are not done. So how do you know whether you are done and how do you know if you are, you are not done? You look at what you have. If there is still something that you can do, for example, now this is what I have. I have sine squared x minus cos squared x. Is there something that I can still do here to simplify it? If your answer is no, then it means you are, you are done. Okay. This is if you are simplifying, but now you are not simplifying. You are, you are proving. So when you are proving, you are approaching a certain destination, which is this one. Okay. So here, there is still something that you can do. But here, I am approaching something that has cos squared x. Okay. So now I remember that I've got identities that I can actually put here. I can change this to be in terms of sine, and then I can just say this is one minus sine squared theta, but this will end up, will end me up with something with sine, with sine squared, which will take me a really long time to get back to cause. So I might as well just take something that is going to remove the sign so that I will remain with cause alone. Cause when causes are on their own, we can be able to to work with them easily. So where there is sine, I'm going to put one minus cos squared x in terms of this identity. So I'll remain with cos on their own and see if I can navigate from whatever that I get from me in order to reach this. So that the left hand side, remember, must be equal to the right hand side. So in the place of this sine x, I put one minus cos squared. So what do I do? It's gonna be one minus 
cos squared x and then brackets over there minus cos squared x okay and then from here you guys can see there is an invisible one here when you take this one you multiply this one then the bracket will remove then you will have one and then you take this one to multiply it here and then it's going to be minus cos squared x so the bracket will then be, be removed okay so this is enough so and then you've got these two which are common fact sorry not common factors which are which are like terms so minus cos squared x minus cos squared x is going to be what it's going to be one this one that is here and then this is going to be minus two cos squared x which is indeed what the, the right hand side and this then concludes what it concludes our our proof all right i know it looks a bit messy yes it is a little bit messy but guys maths always start with that it is messy because and it takes a long time because i'm explaining but when you do it on your own obviously first time when you do it it's going to be a little bit challenging but as you do it over and over again it will be it will be it will be very easy and and very fast remember i've been doing it over and over but now i was supposed to explain it to you so that is why it had i had to do it slowly and explain each and every aspect of it so that you can understand all right now did we reach our objectives what were our objectives our objectives was what is a trigonometric identity we explained that trigonometric identities are things that are declared that they are equal and they can be proved that they are equal and then the basic trigonometric identities we deal with two of them which was a uh, tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta and then sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one and then we did deal with the identities that come from the second one which is cos squared theta is equal to one minus sine squared theta and then sine squared theta is equal to one minus cos squared theta so we basically were able to deal with this issue of basic trick identities now how do you prove them we dealt with how to prove them using the x y and r trigonometric identity expressed in terms of a right angle triangle we were able to do that you saw it you can always go back to this uh, video and you know read two things and then lastly how do you use them and then we, we did mention that we use them in two occasions occasion number one is when you are simplifying and then equation number two is when you need to prove that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side or the right hand side is equal to the left hand side so you you, you, you use trigonometric identities when you are when you're simplifying and then when you are doing what when you are when you are proving that things are equal to each other All right so that means that our objectives for today lessons were met so ladies and gentlemen personal analysis, thank you for tuning in and if you have any questions or any comments be very sure to put it down on the comment section below and then I will try to answer it as soon as, as possible. Thank you very much. And have a lovely day, wonderful people. And goodbye. Thank you.